Good morning and thank you for joining us again in a walk with God. I hope everybody is having a, a blessed day thus far and I do apologize for the, the breeze. I just live in an area that it's a little breezy in the morning so uh, I hope you can hear this. I really just wanted to come on this morning and share the unprecedented amount of signs that we have been given. You know, especially over the past 70 years, how many signs we've been given. But if you look back through history, I mean, even way back in history, the Lord has been giving us signs literally since day one. When you study scripture, you know, uh, Father, Father God, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Abba Father, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of Yeshua. He uh, even called it out in Scripture about what we're to be looking for. And then obviously when Christ came, he spoke of these times in which we live. Peter spoke of them. Paul spoke of them and uh, heavily, and then John spoke of them, about the signs in which we were not only supposed to be looking for, but they warned of these signs. They said, hey, look, when these things happen, you will know that the end is near, that the, the, the appearing of the Lord is at hand. And I'm sure you've probably heard these things on countless videos, uh, YouTube searches, internet searches, or possibly from your own pulpit. I know that it's not a popular topic to be speaking of in today's church. But when, when you really start seeking the Lord on these matters, they begin to literally jump out at you. And when you look at the record uh, weather patterns, it does say in Scripture that these are some of the things we'll see. Distressed nations, will earthquakes, and if you look at the uh, just the number of earthquakes over the past, especially couple years, it's just it's it's unbelievable, and even the magnitude of them has has been increasing. The Again, unprecedented weather that we're having. I, I live in an area that's actually supposed to be really hot this time of the year, and it's actually kind of cool right now. Then you look in other areas that are supposed to be cool, and it's really hot. Uh, the, the, the record number of tornadoes. These are all signs that the Lord has given us. The flooding that is going to definitely affect our food production in America. And, you know, America is recognized as the breadbasket or the, you know, the, the, the one, the nation that produces the most produce throughout the entire world. And that's going to be affected severely due to all this flooding that we're having. And then you look at the pestilence. You know, here, here in the United States, we don't, you know, we don't have as many uh, issues. I think we're still barely hanging on on a remnant of the generations before us who were God-fearing people who committed their life to the Lord Jesus Christ and prayed diligently for this nation. And I ask you to do the same, but also these things must take place before the coming of our Lord. The number of dreams and visions. I mean, everything that is going on, it's already been full to foretold in Scripture. It's sign after sign after sign. And then the main sign, uh, well, even before I get to that, the, sign in the, the signs in the sun, moon, and stars. This has been playing out. Uh, when, you, when you look at the implications just through the signs we've been giving again in the sun, moon, and stars. 
and I can go on and on and on about that, but I would like you to study that for yourself. And then I believe the main sign, uh, Israel. It's been called God's timepiece. When you look at every event going on, and all the events continually going on, that every single day we get a new revelation, a new sign that deals with the times in which we live, the end of times. I believe that we are in the last moments before the rapture of the church and the great tribulation. And so we can't just sit by and ignore what's going on. And I'm sure if you're watching this video, that's why you clicked on it. And there's even other signs I can go into about in the last days would be mockers and scoffers. And, uh, you know, young men will have vision and old men will dream dreams. And I, again, I've said this before, I myself have had a few dreams about the rapture and also about the coming tribulation. And I ask you to please go back and watch those videos. They're amazing. That's, again, what awoke, oh, <laughs> woke me up, basically. I've been a Christ follower for over 25 years. I grew up Catholic, but uh, the Lord had an encounter with the Lord that was uh, incredible. And I gave my life to Christ uh, 25 years ago. So I've been a Christ follower serving Him for over 25 years. Not perfect, but nonetheless serving Him. Uh, doing everything I can to follow Him daily. I've certainly served in many capacities from uh, uh, children's ministries to uh, mission trips and just typical things that you would find in a, a church that, that loves the Lord. But one thing that they never spoke on much is about these times in which we live, about the prophetic end time events, about the eschatology in which is literally taking place right now. I don't know if they did it out of ignorance or if that was purposely done. I, I can't tell you, but you cannot ignore what is going on. And again, just because we live in the United States doesn't mean they're going on. When you look at the persecution of Christians throughout the world, you know, we're not really persecuted here, but we're beginning to be. They're doing everything in their power, that, and they being the uh, unholy, ungodly leadership in this country, that uh, you, mean, you can just turn the news and see all the trash and filth that is going on. Uh, they're, they're trying to change the way we think in the United States, and God bless those who are fighting the good fight and not, not laying down and, and surrendering. At least we're trying to put up a fight. But if you live outside the U.S., especially in maybe uh, if you live in uh, in China or in a, uh, uh, a you know country in the Middle East where Christian persecution is, I mean it's going on, guys. I mean they they have executed more Christians in the past uh, few decades than they have throughout all of human history. So there is Christian persecution going on. And again, just because we don't see it much here, at least not yet anyway, nonetheless it is going on. So we can't take this lightly and we can't just act like it's not happening because it is. Again, because we live in the U.S., I believe we are living on a remnant of blessing that's why when we, when we have earthquakes, things don't get as damaged. But trust me, the day will come. The day will come when uh, all of our technological advances, all of our uh, amazing engineering won't stand up to the massive earthquakes that will happen that are called out in Scripture. But in some of these uh, third world countries, you know, even a, a, a relatively moderate earthquake is destroying buildings and killing many people and again all of the other events going on so there's signs been going on and they've been they've been warning signs the Lord Jesus Christ has been warning of us his return of his return 
we can't deny this. We can't just say it's not happening because it is. And I, I just ask and urge those listening to this video that this is a warning. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming very soon. When you look at God's timepiece, Israel, day by day, you can see that the hour hand, the minute hand, the second hand ticking on our eternity. We can't put our heads in the sand over these things. You know, uh, out of mercy, the Lord even gave warnings to Pharaoh and Israel. He wouldn't let the Israelis, the Israelites go. And so he brought, pl he brought plagues on, on them. I, I believe they're not only to, again, force his hand to release the Israelites, but also as, as signs of mercy, saying, hey, look, here's this plague. You know, why don't you release my people and follow me, basically. I'm paraphrasing about the second part, obviously, but nonetheless, why couldn't that be true? And he refused. And then another plague. He refused again. And another plague, and he refused again. And then it got to the point where his heart was just hardened because it does say in the last days that people will give themselves over to unnatural, lustful desires and begin to seek things that are, that are not right, not natural. And that's, that's happening all around. Matter of fact, they're trying to legalize it. They're trying to make it mandatory that we accept these things. And then when you look at the magnitude, I mean, you don't think there's executions going on in the United States of America? Trust me, there are we, I mean, obviously other nations do this as well. We kind of spearheaded it, I believe. And we have executed over 60 million babies, the most innocent of the innocent. And we're just calling this okay. We're calling this, is, this is no problem. And Abba, Father in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ is, is crying over this nation. Trust me. And judgment will come. It will come to the United States of America as it will come to the rest of the world. But we can't put our heads in the sand over the signs that we have been given. Again, just like there was signs given to even Pharaoh Say, hey, look, just re release my people. And he refused. And then the end, I believe that was the beginning of the collapse of the entire Egyptian empire. But in the end, all of his uh, warriors were drowned in the, in the sea after the Israelites crossed over on dry land. Again, another historical event that, that many just either choose to think that it never happened. Trust me, it did. When you start searching, there is, I mean, mountains of evidence that has been obviously tried to be suppressed even since the day it happened. But it did take place. The land of Israel is God's land and it is the land. Well, Obviously, everything is God's land, but you know what I'm trying to say. I guess the point I'm trying to make here is there are so many signs that we cannot ignore them. And if you choose to ignore them, understand that you may fall victim out of your own ignorance or out of your own hard-heartedness about what's to come. Scripture is clear that we are in the end of days. I, I truly believe we are according to the signs that were given through scripture and then everything else that follows again from the prophetic signs the signs in the sun moon and stars and in the signs that the Lord has been speaking to his people that are eagerly waiting for his return we are in the final moments before the rapture of the church, the rapture of the bride, the rapture, the removal of God's people. And yes, 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 rapture is in the Bible. 
it is. I said this before, just as every other word that was translated from another language, be it Greek, Latin, into English, however you want to slice it, the word rapture is in the Bible. In the English Bible, it has been translated into caught up. So I hope that you don't take what somebody else says and just run with it. I ask you to study these things, these events for yourself. We are in the last moments of the end of times before the great tribulation. The Lord will come and he will remove his bride. He will take those who love and follow him, who their entire heart is for him. Are we perfect? No, nobody's perfect. It says in the word of God, nobody is good, not even one. Only God is good. So it's not by our great deeds that we are saved, but it's only in faith in Jesus Christ. Is a gift of grace, free gift that Jesus has given us. He came down and was born of a virgin. He came down from heaven. He stepped out of heaven and became man. He became flesh for us. And he took our sin punishment for us. If you believe in Jesus Christ, believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. And you surrender your sins to him and say, you know what, God, I don't want to live this way no more. I want to follow you. Repent of your sins and, and understand that in our heart, we've got to, under, we've got to know that we, that we are a sinner and that we need him. And it's only through him that we are saved. It says that the only way to the Father in heaven is through Jesus Christ. And that is the truth. There's no other way. Our good works, our good deeds do not save us. It is only in faith in Jesus Christ is what saves us. Surrender your life to him today. Commit your life to him. He is the only way off this planet. If you die in your sin, if you die outside of Jesus Christ, unfortunately, and as sad as it's hard to say, you will spend eternity in a place called hell, which you do not want to be. People joke about hell. It is no joking matter. You could be with Jesus Christ in heaven forever. And the blessings and the, just the, the beauty that we cannot describe today. Surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Again, the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Believe and trust in his death, burial, and resurrection on the cross. Believe and trust that he was raised from the dead three days later after being buried. And that he ministered and was witnessed by hundreds and hundreds of people. And then he ascended into heaven and is right now seated at the right hand of his Father. Trust and believe that. Trust and believe that he is waiting for his perfect and appointed time to come and to remove his bride. And the reason why he's taking his bride home is to get them out of harm's way before the event called the Great Tribulation happens. And that's basically to bring the hearts of the Israeli people, the people of Israel, back to him. But if you're here during those times and you're reading, uh, watching this message right now, if you're living in the times of the most terrible events going on throughout human history, surrender your life to Jesus Christ right now. Get on your knees and surrender your life to it right now. Call him Lord. Call him Savior. Surrender your sins to him. Trust and believe in Jesus Christ. I hope that this message finds you well, and I pray that this doesn't fall on deaf, deaf ears. The only way to heaven is Jesus Christ. The only way is trust and believe by the free gift of grace. You're not good enough to save yourself. Be a good person does not save you. It is only the free gift of grace and the belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ on the cross that saves you. Surrender your life to him. Give your sins to him. Ask for forgiveness. I hope you have a blessed and wonderful day. I hope this message finds you well. It's in the name and by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen. Bye-bye, guys.